Fox 29 News Now, miraculous survival. 17 people are alive after the crash of a military cargo plane at Dover Air Force Base. So what caused the crash? We're live at the scene. Eligible for ex... Your local news. First, this is the Fox 29 10 o'clock news. It looks like the scene of a major disaster, but all 17 people walked away from this crash of a C-5 military cargo plane in Dover, Delaware. An Air Force commander calls it a miracle. The plane literally belly flops short of the runway at Dover Air Force Base, with the crew members on board all escaping with their lives. An engine problem could be to blame for today's crash. Delaware Senator Tom Carper says military officials told him the crew reported a malfunction in one of the plane's four engines. The plane crashed in an open grassy area about a half mile short of the runway. Some of the 17 people aboard were drenched with fuel, but none received life-threatening injuries, thank goodness. A top commander calls their survival an absolute miracle. A witness to the crash describes what happened. I saw the plane as it, hit the gr as it came and hit the ground. The tail flew off in the, in the out on the back side of the runway, sort of on that side, and then the front of the nose dropped down and hit, and then it looked like it looked like it did a spin. Mm. And in a separate uh, case, a problem occurred aboard the C-5B Galaxy about 10 minutes after it took off from Spain. The crew turned the plane around for the crash landing. Officials say the plane made an unscheduled maintenance stop in Georgia last month, but they did not offer any details. The C-5 is a gigantic workhorse carrying heavy cargo overseas. It's one of the largest airplanes in the world, yet the fleet is aging, and today's crash calls into question the safety of this aircraft. Fox 29's Robin Taylor looks at that issue and talks to a pilot who knows the crew aboard. When something catastrophic like this goes wrong, pilots say their training kicks in. You're not scared, nothing like that, till after it's all said and done, and that's when you're just shaking you're in your boots. Hans Riegel is retired Air Force, a former C-5 instructor pilot. I know those guys. I've flown with those guys, and they are fantastic guys. They've been flying that airplane a long time, and I know they did everything right. What's amazing is the fact that the plane didn't catch fire, even though it was fully loaded with 51,000 gallons of fuel. I'm not amazed that anybody could walk away. What really amazes me is that there wasn't a fire. Here. Two of Delaware's former governors now working on Capitol Hill are calling for a thorough investigation. And obviously uh, the whole future of the, the 28 planes uh, that we have here at, at the base is very important because that really is the heart and soul of this base. Uh, nothing has been grounded uh, as a result of this. Yet the crash certainly calls the future of the C-5 into question. The aircraft has a good safety record but has had its share of problems. We've had maintenance problems with respect to reliability of engines, hydraulic systems, landing gear. C-5s are old and costly to maintain. It's an aircraft that's been around for more than 30 years. They're slowly being replaced by C-17s, a smaller, more expensive cargo plane that can't carry as much or fly as far without refueling. You can modernize three C-5s for the price of one new C-17. The Air Force is modernizing its fleet of C-5s with new engines, landing gear, and hydraulics to try to get another 25 to 30 years out of these planes. The investigation into this crash may test the wisdom behind that decision. In Dover, Robin Taylor, Fox 29 News. Stay with Fox 29 for the very latest on the investigation into the crash of the C-5 cargo jet. Of course, we're going to bring you the very latest developments as we get them. Other Hey, Jody Shackelford here, Spring River Chronicle. Did you know that we have one of the biggest manufacturers of magnets in the state of Arkansas, right here in Highland? Have you seen that green building on Highway 63 going toward Highland, AZ Industries? They make some amazing products in there, and magnets are the biggest thing. And we went and checked it out. We got a great video for you, how it's made Arkansas style. Check it out. Magnets are used in a wide range of products, from advertising specialties like refrigerator magnets to computer hard drives to toys, and a whole host of light and heavy industrial equipment applications. A to Z Industries of Highland, Arkansas 
manufactures all grades of permanent magnets for a wide range of industrial applications. Since 1972, A to Z Industries has strived to fulfill the needs of their customers with precision products through innovation and new technologies. The raw materials used to create magnets come from a variety of sources. Alnico, or an amalgam of aluminum, nickel, and cobalt, is one source. And ceramic materials can be used also for creating magnets. Larger raw stocks, such as merium cobalt blocks and neodymium iron boron, are also common for industrial use. These raw blocks of material are cut and ground to their required sizes and shapes in a variety of processes. Centerless grinders initially cut and grind stock to usable sizes and lengths. Rotary surface grinders are then used to grind the material to their required finish thicknesses. These machines utilize abrasive and or diamond blades and grinding wheels to polish the raw materials to exacting tolerances. Chamfering machines are employed to apply bevels and edges on stock to design specifications for magnets requiring these features. Then comes the actual electromagnetizing process. This is a normal ferrite or ceramic magnet material. It's in its non-magnetized state. All right, and to make a magnet, you gotta place it inside the fixture or coil, which is what this is. Shut it, hit the button, takes a few seconds and then uh, you have a magnet. Now you have a magnet. Each production run is then sent on for quality control inspection. A gauss meter is used to check the strength of the magnetic charge of each batch of finished materials. It's then on to the packaging process where the finished magnets are vacuum sealed according to the customer's requirements. And then are packaged and labeled for worldwide distribution. AZ Industries making some powerful stuff. Be looking for these videos online at myspringriver.com, but also on television. That's right, we are on public access. So check it out and uh, be looking for more interesting features about the local area here in Spring River and the local businesses that produce some really cool stuff and give a lot of important jobs to our community. Thanks a lot. Northeast Arkansas was hit hard by two rounds of flooding in the last week of April. Starting around Easter and through May 2nd, the Spring River had received up to 18 inches of rain, nearly half the year's average rainfall in just a matter of days. According to the National Weather Service, the area receives an average of 44.35 inches of rain yearly. Homes along the Spring River had to be evacuated due to the high waters and one water vehicle rescue was reported involving a mother and her young daughter. Near the mouth of the Spring River, waters rushed over Dam 3, threatening the national fish hatcheries. Cherokee Village received significant damage to low water bridges, even tearing up large sections of asphalt near town center. Roads across northeast Arkansas have been severely affected by the floodwaters and it's unknown the actual cost of the damage. So close to the summer season, officials say they're going to be working hard to get everything back in shape for the tourism season just around the corner. One thing's for sure, everybody's had enough of the rain.
filmed on the streets of Springwell Retro. Doing all this money is going to stay in the local area. We need Ruth. She told me she would pay up. How much is the total? One hundred and ten dollars. One hundred and ten dollars. That she worked for the Red Cross to get pledges for. That's awesome. Well, thank you. You have to really do good to beat this guy over here, though. What did he do? He make a run for it? Six hundred five dollars. Oh, okay. I got a hundred bucks flat. <laughs> All the money that's being raised for the Red Cross in this event will stay in our local area, in the Sharp County area. Good. Now, uh, this, now the police force. Have you guys really? Uh, is this something you've done before in the past? You're going to make it a yearly thing? It hadn't been done in a long time. Uh, years ago, when I was just a jailer at Sharp County, mm -hmm. back in the early years of Sonny's. Yeah. Rain as, as sheriff in Shark County, it was it was a pretty common thing. Uh, Dennis Burton was involved a lot of times, and, and this was pretty common to do this lockup for to raise money for different charities. Yep, it was pretty common. It hadn't been done for quite a while. Uh, the sheriff Mark Counts is involved. He's working over at Ash Flat, also doing the same thing that I'm doing, going around some of the local business people that have agreed to participate in this to help raise money for the Red Cross. Are you innocent? It's $312 million. March 24th's Mega Million Jackpot was hit. Some lucky person out in New York State won $312 million. $312 million. That is a huge, huge payout. If, if nobody would have won this week, it would have went on to be the largest in history in all of America. So we're here today to ask the question, what is $312 million? We've done some research and we've got the answers. What if you put $312 million in a straight line? Find the bills up. It would actually stretch around the globe one and a quarter times. That would be 156 million feet. That is a long way. That's a lot of bills. If you stack $312 million $1 bills on top of each other, it would reach 6,500 feet tall. That's over a mile in the air. That's pretty dang big. $312 million, if you put it in a wheelbarrow and weighed it out, it would be a big wheelbarrow, but it would be 343 tons. That's a lot of weight. If you play the lottery, your chances of winning are 175 million to one. You have a better chance of being hit by lightning at one in 700,000. Now what about the payout? They give you two options. You get the big cash payout with one lump sum, and then they can pay you out over time. Well, if you take the big cash payout, you actually lose $118 million, leaving you with $194 million left over. Only $194 million, that's still a big chunk they take out. Now with the yearly payout option, they'll give you $12 million a year for 26 years. Most Americans go for the cash payout. So let's say you took the one-time cash payout of $194 million. What would the taxes be on $194 million? We talked to Pat Duncan at Duncan Bookkeeping and Tax Service to find out. If you won $194 million in 2010, your tax liability for the federal and the state of Arkansas would be $69,873,169. So after taxes, you're left with a little over $100. $24 million. So how would you invest $124 million? What kind of return could you get? We asked the expert, Steve Thompson with Edward Jones. If clients came to us with a lottery winning the what was described, 
um, to us of approximately 124 million, uh, a well-managed portfolio, well diversified over time, you know, a reasonable rate of return expectation would be in the eight percent uh, taxable range and around four and a half to five percent tax-free. Now, if you're not the Wall Street investment type and you're looking for maybe just a savings account, let's find out what kind of return you can get on that. We're here at FNBC to get the answers. If a customer were to come in with $127 million and let's say they were to invest in a savings account, which is yielding approximately a quarter of a percent right now, annually they would earn a little over a quarter of a million or $250,000. With that, making probably about 22000 roughly a month in interest alone, which obviously most people could live off of comfortably. Um, if they were to invest, let's say, in a CD, uh, right now 48 month is earning uh, close to 2.5%. They were to do that with $127 million, they would earn a little over $3 million in interest a year. What would you do with $312 million? Let's find out. I would buy a, a small house on the ocean. I would open up a dog shelter, but it wouldn't be the average dog shelter. It would be um, where you, I'd build homes for people to live in and I'd make them take care of however many animals that the law would allow. And as long as they took care of them, they could live there rent and bill free. I'd go out and have a good time. <laughs> it donates money to Sharp County to build a hospital because it's something we need desperately and it would help a lot of people. I'll have a home and uh, be able to help other people and help the people that would need in the hospital and for cancer and stuff like that with children. There's a lot of different things you could do with $312 million and everybody's got a dream. Now while the price of a ticket's only a buck, and you might get you know, struck by lightning before you could win this thing. Hope is priceless.